Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Marjana Binti Umar Yusuf and I will present on the role of regulatory body bank development ratio towards the Islamic financial institution. So the contents that I will cover today is part one is on the introduction and key roles of bank development ratio. Part two is on the roles of bank development ratio and Sharia advisory council. And part three is on the strategies and challenges. Part one is on the introduction of Bank Negara Malaysia. Okay, Bank Negara Malaysia is a statutory body which started operation on 26 January 1959. And Bank Negara Malaysia is governed by the Central Bank of Malaysia Act 2009. And the currency used in Benegal Malaysia is Malaysia Ringgit. Uh, if you want uh, to get more information on what is Benegal Malaysia, you can uh, search on their website, which is www.bnm.gov.my. The mission statement of Benegal Malaysia first first and foremost is on promoting a work culture which emphasizes the highest standards of professionalism and integrity, prudence, teamwork, and also innovation. Second, uh, the mission statement is on developing and maintaining a committed workforce which is highly competent and proactive, sensitive to the changing needs of the industry. And lastly, is adopting policies and practices to enhance the competitive competitiveness of local financial institutions to face the international competition. So, uh, there's uh, I will go through more into the introduction of Benegal Malaysia, which is their main purpose is its its main purpose is to issue currency act as the banker and advisor to the government of Malaysia and also regulate the country's financial institution, credit system and the monetary policy. It also promoting a sound, progressive and inclusive financial sector that is articulated in the Central Bank of Malaysia Act 2009. So, Benegara Malaysia's environment, they aim at promote for monetary and financial stability, right? So, uh, to do is, to doing so, they need to provide a conducive environment for sustainable growth of Malaysian industry, uh, Malaysian economy. Next is on the governor, governor. Uh, current governor of Benegal Malaysia is Dato Nur Shamsia Binti Wanayunus. Okay done with the introduction of Bank Negara Malaysia and now I will proceed with the key roles of Bank Negara Malaysia. So, uh, first and foremost is fun on the financial sector development. They build on the achievement of the financial sector master, master plan to evolve um, financial ecosystem that will best serve a high value added, high income Malaysian economy while also having an increasingly important role in meeting the growing financial needs of emerging Asia. Next is on the financial inclusion. So, the provision of suitable, affordable and quality financial services to all segments of society contributes to balance as well as sustainable economic growth and development. Next, next role of Bank Negara Malaysia is on the payment system. So Bank Negara Malaysia facilitates the improvement in payment services and market development through uh, fostering payment innovation and ensuring public feel confident in the retail payment system and the use of payment and settlement system. Next is on the monetary policy. Bank Negara Malaysia's monetary policy stand is to maintain price stability while remaining supportive of growth. Next is on the financial stability. Financial stability describes uh, the condition where the financial intermediation process 
functions smoothly and there is confidence in the operation of key financial institution and market within the economy. On monetary operation, monetary free operations are discretionary market operation and the main mechanism through which the bank adjusts uh, liquidity, liquidity in the banking system by absorbing or adding liquidity via various type of instruments to achieve its operating target and also the average overnight interbank rate. Lastly is on the foreign exchange market. So Bank Negara Malaysia also plays an important functions in implementing initiative to deepen and strengthen the financial markets including the foreign exchange market. Now let's proceed with the powers of the bank. All the acts that uh, govern the Bank Negara Malaysia. First and foremost, obviously the Central Bank of Malaysia Act 2009, which is provide establishment and administration and also powers of the bank. Next is on the Islamic Financial Services Act 2013. So, this act is to provide for the regulation and supervision of Islamic financial institutions, payment system and other relevant entities and the oversight of the Islamic money market and Islamic foreign exchange market to promote financial stability and compliance with Sharia and for related consequential or incident matters. Next is on the anti-money laundering, anti-terrorism financing and process of unlawful activities act 2001. So the act to, is to provide for the offense of money laundering, the measures to be taken for the prevention of money laundering and terrorism, financing offenses, investigation powers and the forfeitures of property involved in or derived from money laundering and terrorism financing offenses as well as terrorist property process of unlawful activity and instrumentalities of an offense. Next, we will go deeper on the powers of the bank, Bank Negara Malaysia. So, uh, next is on the Financial Services Act 2013. This provides for the regulation and supervision of financial institutions, payment system and other relevant entities and the oversight of the money market and foreign exchange market to promote financial stability and for related consequential or incidental matters. Insurance Act 1996 is to provide the new law for the licensing and regulation of insurance businesses, insurance broking business, adjusting business, and financial advisory business, and for other related purposes on insurance. Next is on Money Services Business Act 2011. MS, MSBA provide for the licensing, regulation, and also supervision of the money services business comprising money changing remittance and wholesale currency businesses. Lastly is on the Development Financial Institution Act 2002. This act is focuses on promoting the development of effective and efficient development financial institution to ensure that the rules, objectives and also the activities of the development financial institution are consistent with the government policies and that the mandated rule are effectively and efficiently implemented. On the part two, which is on the Bank Negara Malaysia and Sharia Advisory Council. So what is Sharia Advisory Council? SAC is established in May 1997 as the highest Sharia authority in Islamic finance in Malaysia. SAC also has been given the authority for the ascertainment of Islamic law and responsible for validating all Islamic banking and takaful products to ensure their compatibility with the Sharia principle. And SSC also advises Bandagar Malaysia on any Sharia issue relating to Islamic financial businesses or transaction of on 
on the Banegara Malaysia as well as other related entities. SAC also is the sole authoritative body on Sharia matters pertaining to Islamic banking, takaful and Islamic finance. So SAC ruling will apply to the court and arbitrator for any proceeding relating to Islamic financial business and such rule will be binding. And lastly is SAC has the authority to issue resolution for the purposes of Islamic banking businesses, takaful businesses, Islamic financial businesses, Islamic development financial business or any other business which is based on Sharia principle and is supervised and regulated by Bank Negara Malaysia. Next is on the strategy and challenges to treating an Islamic financial system as an integral part of the international financial system. So first and foremost, the development of the uh, sustainable Islamic financial system system that is able to withstand the challenges of the uncertainties and instabilities inherent in the global financial system. Thus, not only uh, require an effective global financial architecture, but also a system that is supported by an appropriate, comprehensive and sound domestic financial infrastructure. infrastructure sorry. Okay, second, is on the attention has been given the, uh, to developing the financial infrastructure, including the financial market, institutions and agencies, as well as establish the necessary prudential and accounting standards. While the latter has included the borrowers, investors and institu institutions that participate in the process. Next is uh, the IFSB has already made progress in developing the prudential standards on capital ad adequacy and risk management uh, framework and has commenced work on developing standards on corporate governance. It also appropriate accounting standards has also been put in place to reflect the truth and fair value of banking operation that would lead to greater accountability and responsibility on the part of financial institutions. Institutions. Lastly is to complement the effort to create a sustainable and comprehensive Islamic financial system, consumer education and awareness on the Islamic banking and finance should be extensively undertaken and concerted efforts between the governments and Islamic uh, financial fraternities should be engaged to develop such a consumer education program. Okay, I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you for listening and watching.